Hi everybody, uh, David Harrington here, your college and career facilitator for the most amazing Washington and Schlegel students, um, supporting you on your dual and concurrent needs and uh, with tech as well. So I'm coming at you today with another helpful tip. Um, we've talked in the past about how it can feel very isolating being at home, doing online learning. I'm sure most people would like to get back and see their friends and uh, take advantage of being in the classroom to get that better understanding, but right now we know that's not possible. Um, one thing that I want to mention to you is that a great way to connect with other students in your class or um, well, really just to connect with them is to, is to create a virtual study group. And so you're well into your classes by now. I know they must be getting challenging for you. And while some classes are perfectly fine for online learning, some are not. Maybe Spanish, college algebra, I can think of some others that if you were to be sitting in class around other people, having an instructor, it would probably make it a lot easier. And so one way to sort of make up for that is to form a virtual study group. You can help each other out on problems. You can help go through your Spanish verb conjugations. Um, and you can also just connect with other people. So it's another way for you to see each other's faces, to talk like you used to in the library, in the cafeteria, and to be able to get that extra bit of socializing as well as bolstering your learning. So what I'm gonna do is walk you through the steps. Well, I'm not, I'm gonna show a very short two minutes uh, YouTube video that's gonna give a better tutorial than I could. So let me share my screen with you real quick. And just bear with me as we go through this. It's only a couple of minutes long. Need to schedule a Zoom call with your colleagues, but not sure how? I'm Jessica from techboomers.com, and in this video, I'll be showing you how to schedule a Zoom call. Now let's get started. To begin, go to zoom.us in your browser and log into your account. Then click My Account. At the top, click Schedule a Meeting. Now you can add in some details for your meeting. Add a topic and description so your invitees will know what the meeting is about. Then add the date and time you'd like the meeting to start, as well as the duration of the meeting. You can automatically generate a unique meeting ID for this call or use your personal meeting room ID. If you plan to have a meeting with the same people at the same time on a regular basis, click the recurring meeting checkbox. Then choose the recurrence, how often to repeat it, and an end date or number of times you want this meeting to occur. If you want to keep your meeting more secure, you can password protect the meeting room by checking off the require meeting password box. Then type in what you'd like the password to be. Now you can choose if you'd like the host and or participants to have their video on, audio dial in options. You can also allow participants to join before the host, mute participants when they first enter the call, allow a waiting room, and record your meeting automatically on your computer. When you're done filling in these details, click Save. Now you can add this meeting to your Google, Outlook, or Yahoo calendar and invite your colleagues from there. Or click Copy the Invitation and send the invite through email or your company's instant messaging system. Once you've scheduled a meeting, it will appear in your schedule under the My Meetings tab as well as on the Meetings page of the Zoom desktop app. That's all it takes to schedule a Zoom conference call. Thanks for watching. If you found this video helpful, we'd love it if you'd hit the thumbs up button below. Okay, so thank you to Tech Boomers there for that uh, short tutorial. A couple of things about that that I want to mention is you want to be sure that you do put in a title. So if it's a, a college algebra study group, make sure that you title it that way. Maybe put it in the description as well. You don't have to have a recurring meeting, so that's just gonna be up to you. If you wanna set uh, once a week or something like that, you can do that, but you can also just do it once and send that invite out. Another thing to mention is, I, I do believe if you use your M account through KCKPS, that's your student email, and you log in through Google, if you log into Google through your Chrome browser, and then go to that website, I do believe you can hit the option of logging in through Google, and that will give you the full, uh, length of meetings that you want to have. I, I do believe that's the case, but otherwise, if not, 40 minutes is still a good amount of time, so either way. Another thing I want to mention is, I suggest that you do have your cameras on, unless there's some specific reason why not. Um, even we as employees are required to keep our cameras on, and you're not required to by any means, but 
it's nice to see another person's face. You know, when you're talking to them, it's nice to see their facial reactions. And, you know, it's, it makes us feel like we're more connected to one another. And that's part of the reason why we're doing this. I do suggest that you let you allow the option to have all audio because some people might be on their phones and some people might be on their computers. So that's just another thing to think about. Now, at the end, they showed the part about copying it to your clipboard, and that's what's going to really work well for you. And so I'm going to walk you through that process as well. I've already copied a, a meeting myself. And so what, what you could do, and there's a couple of ways, once you have that meeting copied, let me just close this out here. Once you have that meeting copied, you could go into Blackboard where you'll be working with most classes. And let's just say, for example, you're going to do a Spanish one uh, study group. And so you'll hit that like you always would to come to the home page. Go over here to course messages. You're going to create a message. And then you're going to hit that two button just like that. And as we talked about this last week, but these are all the people that are in your class. And listen, you may want to connect directly with Washington students or directly with friends from Schlegel. That's great. But, you know, let's make some new friends. Reach out. If you, if you see someone in a Spanish Zoom and they seem to know what they're talking about, that's the person you want in your study group, right? And so let's just say, oh, yeah, here's, here's a person. I want, I want her. I want, let's see, I want Oscar. I want Fabiola. And I want Yasin. Okay, so I'm going to put them in my recipients area. And then you're going to come down, you're going to put in your subject line, I already have it in there, so Spanish study group. Then, of course, you'll go down to the body of the email, and this is where you're actually going to be posting the um, meeting invite. Now, Blackboard, it doesn't let you do the right click and paste or the double finger click and paste, and so it's pretty simple. You just hit Command and V. And then you can see this was the meeting that I generated for this video, and it's got my, I'm inviting them to a scheduled meeting. It's called, my topic is, your topic would be Spanish study group. And then it's got the time that we're meeting, the date, and then here's the link for the Zoom, the ID, and the password. And that's another thing to mention real quick that I didn't before. I really think it's a great idea for you to use a password. We all know that there's been plenty of internet trolls jumping into Zoom meetings. It's not acceptable. It's ridiculous. And you don't want that happening to you. If, for example, that does happen to you, please let us know. We as a district do not tolerate that, and we want to be able to do something about it so you have a safe place to meet with your friends. So this is the way that you can do it through Blackboard. Once you've got the meeting invite in, boom, you hit submit, and it goes to that student's Blackboard account. Uh, another way would just be to use your own basic email. Now, I know everybody's got a few email accounts. You at least have a KCKCC and a KCKPS. I suggest you continue to use your KCKPS one because we want you checking that email every day and often. So go over to your email. This is mine, but I'm just going to do it like this. And let's say, for example, I'm, I want to have Principal Thompson, Principal Amaya, uh, Mr. Bull, the counselor at Schlegel, and Ms. Howard, the counselor at Washington. That's going to be my study group. So I put their email addresses in. I go down here. I'm going to make sure that I title this. Spanish study group and then just go down here and hit paste. So there you can see all the information for the Zoom and you just send it out. And then when you get ready uh, to host the meeting, which by the way, if you're setting up the invite, you are the host. So you're the one who will be letting people in and out and creating the rules for that meeting. If you're not there, they will not be able to come into the meeting without you unless you've clicked that special option, which I don't I don't know. It's up to you. Anyway, you are the host now of this meeting. So if your meeting's at, let's say, like here it says 3 o'clock, get on that meeting at 2.59, okay? Open it up so that people aren't sitting there waiting, wondering where you are, if you're not going to show up. Be there early to the meeting, um, and that way when people begin to log in, you'll be there waiting and ready to go. All right, so that really is the majority of the tutorial. I, I went a little fast, but I found that people will watch them more if they're short. <laughs> I get it. Um, that's fine. But listen, use this as a tool. It, we all have to really learn how to evolve and adapt to this situation. And this is just another way that you can try to get some normalcy back in your life, connecting with other people, learning more about the subjects that are being taught to you and really maximizing those tools. The last thing I want to say is a couple of things. Be sure that you know that September 30th is the last day to drop a class. That means if you're struggling, if you've missed a bunch of class, you're totally underwater, we need to have a conversation. Okay, we need to talk to your parents, your professor, you, and see if dropping you out of the course is the right option or if, hey, maybe you can make it back 
And then by the end of the semester, you're where you need to be. But after September the 30th, if you're doing poorly in class and you want to be withdrawn, you can be, but that class will stay on your transcript. It'll show up as a W. And in all honesty, you don't want to enter into your freshman year of college with a W on your transcript. It just doesn't look good. And so that a W is something we want to avoid as much as possible. And, you know, the worst thing would be if you were to end the semester with a D or an F. Carrying a D or an F into your college years is a real bummer. It brings down your GPA. It looks poorly on your application. Um, there's just, we just don't want that to happen. Um, so let's really think about that drop date of September 30th. If you are struggling, please reach out and let me know. And we'll begin to have those conversations about what may work best for you. The last thing is keep an eye out for that uh, Diploma Plus virtual uh, college fairs. They're starting today. There's a series of dates. Um, I don't want to rattle them off. I don't have them in front of me, but there's plenty of emails that have been sent out. I sent one out. Um, if you don't know and you need more information, you need to email Mr. Franco at Schlegel and Mr. Wall at uh, Washington. So they can both give you more details about how to get signed up and I encourage that you do. It's open to all juniors and seniors, even if it's not the college that you particularly want that's in that time slot, open your mind, you know, open your mind. Uh, you don't know what's right for you yet because you have not investigated all your options. So uh, go to the, that Diploma Plus College Fair. If you have questions about it, email your college and career coordinator or email me and I'll direct you in the right place. I appreciate everyone's time today. Uh, just to continue on, I am here for you, uh, trying to help support you the best that I can. And I, I want you to reach out to me with any questions or problems that you may have. Um, thank you guys and have a great day.